You know, every few months I feel like I see a new headline claiming that scientists have finally cured hair loss. And honestly, as someone who has lived through hair loss multiple times and the trauma that comes along with that, my response is almost always, it's gotta be clickbait. Because when you've gone through hair loss and you've lost 40, 50, 60, 70% of your hair, sometimes it doesn't feel like there is hope. But recently, and I mean very recently, things have changed. There are actual research teams and clinical trials and published data showing that scientists are actually getting closer and closer than we might think. And I'm not just talking about slowing down hair loss or maintaining what you already have. I'm talking about actually reactivating dormant hair follicles. Pretty wild, right? So in today's video, I'm gonna walk you everything that has happened recently, especially the really cool work that has come out of UCLA and UC Irvine. And I'm gonna break down all the scientific data. So let's get into this video. Before we do, don't forget to subscribe to my channel. Oh, and by the way, I'm Deepa. I'm someone who has experienced hair loss myself. You can see it all over my channel. There's tons of videos, but I'm here to help you guys on your own hair growth journey. So let's dive into this video. So you know when you've talked to your dermatologist or your doctor, and there's always kind of like a bit of a heaviness when it comes to hair loss. Most of them will tell you that you can try minoxidil or Rogaine, maybe even PRP or PRF, but a lot of the times what you'll hear is that it's not necessarily gonna all come back. And the reason for that is because hair follicles are tiny organs and they go through phases, growth, rest, and shed, kind of like its own little life cycle. But whenever something interrupts that cycle, like a hormonal shift, something stressful happens in your life, autoimmune issues flare, or if you've experienced nutrient deficiencies, those tiny organs get confused. And once a follicle becomes dormant, it's like switching it off. You can try all the treatments, but it's not going to respond to those. And so then the solution becomes, well, let's try this strong medication that has crazy side effects or the extreme of like going and trying a hair transplant. There's been things that have been suggested to manage the situation, but not necessarily to reactivate dormant follicles. Until a few research labs decided to ask the question, how do we slow down hair loss? And how do we switch these follicles back on? And that's when everything changed. So we're gonna get into a few of the different exciting things that are happening in the hair follicle reawakening world. First up, let's talk about what's most popular and that is what is happening at UCLA. Because this is the one that most people have probably seen little whispers of online. And I'm here to tell you that yes, the hype is real. A team at UCLA discovered molecule PP405, and what it does is actually kind of wild. PP405 goes straight to the follicle stem cells, which are like the master cells that control hair growth, and literally switches the flip from off to on. And here's what they found. They isolated a protein that keeps your follicles dormant. Think of it kind of like a brake pedal inside of your follicle, and then PP405 goes in and it turns that brake off. And then suddenly the follicle is awake again and switched on. And early trials in humans showed real activity. So yes, they're in the human trial phase now. In a tiny study, participants applied PP405 cream for just one week, and the researchers saw something that people have been trying to achieve for decades. Dormant follicles started to show signs of activation. Stem cells went from resting to active, measured by real biological markers. That's a huge deal, especially for women that have been dealing with chronic thinning, because in this situation, oftentimes the follicles are just dormant. They're not dead. They're just asleep. And then in phase two trial results, which happened about mid 2025, it showed measurable regrowth. This is what everybody started to notice. About 31% of participants showed an increase of hair density of 20%. And why that's significant is because that's unheard of unless you've had a hair transplant. And they're not talking about regrowth from baby hairs. They're talking about like actual terminal ones. And I think the best part of this is it's not a hormonal treatment. So, you know, if you have PCOS, perimenopause, menopause, women can use this. And that's why everybody's sort of sitting up and taking notice. So yes, it's super exciting that they are in human trials now. They're not just working on mice, but in terms of when it will be available, if you know anything about the science world, it takes a long time to get anything approved by the FDA. So realistically, we're looking at like late 2027, possibly 2028. They have funding from Google Ventures. The trials are progressing. Everything looks great safety-wise so far, but it's not available just yet. So let's get into the second big breakthrough. 
So while PP405 turns the switch on, a team of scientists in UC Irvine, led by Dr. Maxim Pickus, they discover the signal that follicles use to tell each other to grow. This molecule is called SCOBY3. In healthy scalps, dermal papilla cells produce SCOBY3, which basically tells surrounding follicles, okay, it's time to grow now. But in people with pattern hair loss, that signal is broken. So the team at UC Irvine were thinking, what if we actually inject SCOBY3 into the scalp? And it worked. In tests, dormant hair follicles started to regrow again. So they grafted human hair follicles onto mice, injected the Scooby-3 nearby, and the follicles woke up. And the surprising thing is that nearby follicles from the mouse actually grew too. This showed that the signal alone was enough to trigger regrowth. Amplifica created an injectable version called AMP303. It's not a filler or PRP or stem cells. It's a precision engineered signaling treatment. And what happened in the first human study, in one treatment cycle after 60 days there was a 15% increase in terminal hairs and at 150 days in, there was a 10% sustained increase. And they also noticed a thickening of existing hairs. That's just with one treatment. So we're not talking about daily use, we're not talking about having to use it forever, just one session. And again, this is not hormonal, so women will be included in future trials. So who's gonna benefit from this one the most? Women with thinning at the top or a widening part, loss at the temples, diffuse shedding from long-term hormonal imbalance, women that have dormant follicles from chronic androgenic miniaturization, postpartum and perimenopausal thinning. So now when this will be available is likely 2026-2027 for like early clinical access. You're probably looking at like 2028 for like cosmetic dermatology clinics. So so far we have PP405, AMP303, which are two completely different technologies and both are trying to wake up your follicles. And that's why like it's really exciting if you think about 2028 how prevalent access to hair growth treatments will be. I can't wait. Okay so now we've talked about like more of the androgenic alopecia, like male female pattern baldness, hormonal hair loss. Let's talk about autoimmune related hair loss like alopecia areata. And this one actually has a treatment right now. In case you haven't heard, the FDA has approved two medications for alopecia areata treatment. And I'm talking about JAK inhibitors. These are immune modulating drugs that calm down the attack on your hair follicles. And in trials, 35 to 40% of patients with severe alopecia areata regrew 80% or more of their hair, which is incredibly life-changing, especially for people that have been dealing with alopecia areata for many, many years and have lost an enormous amount of hair. And while these aren't for everyone, I can completely understand not wanting to take medication because they are pretty serious medications. The fact that this research exists is pretty promising for the future. Okay, so I know we're in 2025, 2028 seems like a little far away right now. So let's talk about what you can do in the meantime while we are waiting for these things to be developed because there's a lot that you can do. So here's what you wanna do to get your scalp ready. The first thing you wanna do is get a diagnosis. I've said this many, many times on my channel, all hair loss is not created equally. You wanna know what type of hair loss you're experiencing. Like is it androgenic? Is it autoimmune? Is it traction? Is it telogen effluvium? There's so many different types of hair loss. Like knowing what triggered your hair loss is the very first step in regrowing your hair. The second thing you wanna do once you have that knowledge is to support your follicles now. The healthier your hair follicles are, the more easily they will respond to PP405 and AMP303. So you want to get on top of and figure out what your nutritional deficiencies are, treat any thyroid issues that you might be experiencing, support your adrenals, eat enough proteins, avoid tight hairstyles, that's very important, and reduce chronic inflammation. What you can use today in the meantime is red light therapy. You guys know that's one of my absolute favorite go-tos. Daily scalp massage, hair oiling, stress management to reduce your inflammatory response. So I hope this was helpful and I hope this gives you guys some hope as to what's to come. And make sure that you're subscribed to this channel and share this with anybody that might need to see this because I'm going to stay on top of what is developing in the science world when it comes to hair loss cures in the future. Meanwhile, in the comments, you can let me know a little bit about your hair loss if you'd like, and I'll try to help you as much as possible. I'll see you guys soon with another video.